on my lips. That was my first question. I was a late bloomer to all of that. Um, but I think I was at Disneyland. I was under the monorail. No, I think she just grabbed me and kissed me. It was at night. She grabbed me and kissed me. It was only about four years ago. But it was... Just kidding. Um, it, and I remember thinking like, whoa. It just it was great. The monorail, not like, you know, Matterhorn. Yeah. Or I, the teacups. Yeah, because it wouldn't be a kiss if I'd be throwing up on her. It was, um, I, it was. She, I think she just kind of grabbed me, like romantic, like, and kissed me under the monitor, you know, and it went over. But I just remember thinking it was the greatest feeling that I that I ever felt. And then, then it wasn't her, but a, a few years later was came sex, and that was like, this is terrible. Let's go back to kissing. That was more fun and. My name is John Stamos. I'm on a show called Big Shot, which I came up with the title. It was originally called, it was called, when I signed on, it was called The Big Ugly. I was like, mm, I don't want to be on that. I play Marvin Korn, which is another strange name. And my wife said, Marvin Korn? I said, no, I love that name. And they, they actually couldn't clear it because there was another Marvin Korn. And I said, I, spell it different. I don't care. I got to keep that name. First TV show I was on, General Hospital. I played Blackie Parrish, and my character was supposed to die. And my mom wrote all these letters to ABC <laughs> over and over again, and they kept me around. But it was, oh God, it was great. That show was super popular at the time. I was so new, I was 18 years old, and I'd, somehow I learned what, what um, you're in my eye, line, like you're in my eye line right now, Lynn, but I like it. But, but I thought it was something that you weren't supposed to like. So I'm doing my scenes, Blackie, blah, blah, blah. And I look, and there was someone in the eye line, I go, can you get that woman out of my eye line? And it was Elizabeth Taylor sitting in a director's chair having champagne. Sammy Davis was on, and I didn't know who he was. I was 18. I said, Dad, who's this? And he said, oh, man, that's Sammy you know, Davis Jr. I said, what do I talk to him about? He said, drums. He plays, he's a drummer, you're a drummer. I said, um, I always wanted to play drums on TV, and they won't let me. And, and, and there was a set. He, he was uh, singing on the show, so there was a band set up and the whole thing. And he goes back to the producer's booth, and he comes back at me, and he says, just do what I say, man. I'm like, what? Just do what I say. And I go, okay. And then we start the scene, and then he's up there, and he ad libs, says, Blackie, you, you play drums, right? And they cut to me like, wow. He said, come on up here. And I went up, and I, there was a drum set there. And I played drums on TV ever since. I played Blackie for two years. I always wanted to be on sitcoms. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be funny. And, I, and so after I signed this, terrible contract for like, I think I was making $300 an episode or something, but the show got huge and I got teen magazines and stuff. And I said, I want to leave. And the producer was this beautiful, brilliant woman named Gloria Monti. She said, you can't leave. I said, well, I, th I think I can. I don't know where I got the balls. I don't have them now. And she took me to the Brown Derby. I'll never forget it. And we walked in and it was weird because you're in a hat. And Dean Martin was sitting over at the other table. I said, oh, wow. I went over and said hi and stuff. And she said, you know, you'll never work again if you leave my show. When you first start out, you're, you're fearless. And, and that was a fearless move. And it, I, I, it's taken me so long to try to get back to that. I watched the kids on, on Big Shot and they're fearless. I said, keep that. Over the years, you just start listening to people and you start believing stuff. I was like, ah. My dad kept me humble. My, my parents did. I remember my, my, one of my friends told me recently, he said, you know, I told, when you got famous, I, I went up to your dad, I said, man, Johnny could get any girl he wants. And my dad said, well, not any girl. He always kind of kept me in my, my spot, place. When I started to get sort of famous on General Hospital, first of all, I worked at his restaurant on the weekend. And people were coming in going, can I have a che Aren't you the guy on t No, I, I'll have a cheeseburger and a thing. And eventually I said, Dad, I'm famous. He always kept me level. I would come home from doing these car shows. These, these, you'd go in autographs. And I'd come home with like bags of cash. Dad, look at this, like 10,000 bucks of cash. Say, good, go clean up the dog poop. And my dad loved Sinatra and I loved Elvis. Wow. And we got, would argue about it. And he said, you know what? Go listen to Frank Sinatra and I'll listen to Elvis and we'll come back. And we did. And I said, you're right, Dad. Sinatra's cool. What did you think of Elvis? And he went, eh. Who was your first um, cinematic crush or TV crush? My neighbor kid had a Farrah Fawcett picture. Oh. You know, that famous one in the bathing oh, suit. Watched the poster a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, 